Hello, Quincy families. I'm Mrs. Apsey, and I get to be the principal of Quincy Elementary. I call myself the luckiest principal in the world because I get to spend every day with you. And we are so excited to be able to welcome students back on September 1st. And we all know that because of COVID-19, some things have changed at school, but a lot of things haven't. You're gonna find the hallways full of joy and laughter, even six feet apart, and the classrooms full of exciting learning, even with masks on. Our goal this year is let's stay together, Quincy. We are going to put our masks on and we're going to stay two arms apart at school in order to try to keep everybody safe. So let's dive into a day in the life at Quincy and talk about how some of the procedures have changed for this year. So one of the things to think about is before coming to school, we need to check to make sure students are not sick or have not been exposed to COVID-19. So here's some helpful guidelines of who must stay home or who will be sent home. So of course, anyone who's in isolation or quarantine for COVID-19, and then anyone who has symptoms of COVID-19 that are new or not typical for that student or staff member. So any one of these symptoms, a cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, a loss of taste or smell, or any two of these symptoms, a fever of greater than or equal to 100.4 or feeling feverish, chills, muscles ache, and you can read that. But if you have any of two of those symptoms, then it's really important to stay home. And we, of course, always ask that students who have a fever stay home until they're 24 hours fever free. So more information about illness and COVID-19 can be found in some of the resources we've been sharing, like our Ottawa County Return to School Toolkit. But what we want families to really know is that attendance rules are not going to be as stringent this year because we know families are going to have to keep their children home for possible isolation or quarantine, or we're just gonna be a little bit more cautious about illness this year and keeping students home if they're ill. So we have your back on that. Don't worry for a minute. Okay, so next, there we go. We wanna talk about arriving at school. So if you ride the bus, some things are going to be the same. Some things are going to be different. You're going to have your mask on, on the bus. You're going to sanitize as you enter and exit the bus. And then you're going to arrive to school. And this year, we are going to release one bus at a time so that we can avoid congestion in the hallways at school. And you are actually going to go directly to your classroom and be greeted by your teacher. So if you are in upper elementary, you're going to go around to the upper elementary playground doors to enter into the building. And if you're in lower elementary, you're going to enter through the bus doors. And then if you are getting dropped off by a parent, there's some really important things to remember. But the first and foremost, you are going to pull up to the curb or the drop off lane. and You're going to remain in your cars until 825. And at that time, a staff member is going to go out and give you a thumbs up and let you know that it's okay to get out of your cars because we can't have students standing at the door this year like we typically do. That's just too close together and too much congestion. So we're going to give you the thumbs up and then that means that you, you can get out of your car, okay? Safety note, parents must escort students to the front curb if you're going to park in a spot rather than pull up to the drop-off curb. So we only pull up to the drop-off curb if we're going to stay in our cars. But if you want to get out of your car and walk your child to the curb, because remember, you can't come in school this year, then um, yeah, we don't have send students to the parking lot on their own. We ask that parents accompany students to the curb then if you're parking. So please know that we love our parents and volunteers, even though they're not allowed in school at this time. And we want you to come in and visit the Quincy office if you need to drop off something or get a form. Um, we welcome you. If you have a question, maybe this year would be a good year to use email or call instead because we have a limited capacity in the office. We can only welcome three family members or students at a time. And other family, other people are going to have to wait out in the hallway between the two doors right outside the office. 
So if you can just help us um, observe that office limit of three people at a time, and then we have social distancing stickers on the floor to help us keep um, six feet apart. School breakfast, we're going to have school breakfast this year. It's gonna look a little different because if your child is going to eat breakfast at school, they're going to come in according to those arrival procedures we just talked about and drop their stuff off at their locker or their coat hook. And then they'll head down to the cafeteria to get their breakfast and then go back to the classroom to eat it. So we are going to be working on social distancing this year in an effort to impede the spread of COVID-19. We know we probably can't prevent it, but we're going to try to impede it as much as possible. We're going to put obstacles in its way, right? And one of the obstacles we're going to put in the way of the spread of COVID-19 is social distancing. So we're going to work really hard to have students stay two arm lengths apart. And as a staff, we're going to try to do the same. And that's really hard for us to stay two arm lengths apart from our students. But we're going to really, really try. And families can help us with this by talking through the importance of keeping our hands to ourselves and to stay two arm lengths apart. Because our goal is let's stay together, Quincy. We are going to have masks on and two arms apart. And in this video, I don't have to have my mask on all the time because I'm actually alone in a room. So nobody has to worry about getting my germs right now. We are still going to have WIN this year, which is what I need. But this fall, WIN intervention will look a bit different. We're not going to be mixing students from different classrooms, but instead our intervention staff will push into classrooms to provide support to students who need it. Or they might pull two or three students from the same class out into a small intervention group. So we're still going to give children what they need academically. Bathroom procedures have changed a bit too. But good news, we have lots of plans in place in order to make sure that students can use their bathroom when their little bladders need it. So we'll be scheduling bathroom breaks carefully to avoid congestion in the bathroom. And then students will be able to use the bathroom if they need to at other times. It would limit you the number of students in the bathroom to the number of stalls or urinal, urinals available. Kind of makes sense. So we're not going to have them waiting inside the bathroom. But instead, we have social distancing dots outside bathroom doors for students to use as they wait. Snack time! Students should bring a snack to school each day. We would love for them to bring something that's easy to unwrap, quick to eat, and healthy. An apple a day, right? Keeps the doctor away. That's a great snack. Our drinking fountains are not available for use, but we did get a couple water bottle fillers installed at the school. There's one down the lower elementary wing, and then there's one in the cafeteria. And we really encourage students to bring water bottles to school this year. Each classroom also has a sink. They won't be able to use the um, drinking fountain in the, the sink in the classroom, but they'll be able to fill their water bottles. We're going to be teaching students how to properly wash their hands at school. And that's for 20 seconds, right? That's a great thing to practice at home and really scrubbing. They'll have access to classroom and bathroom sinks and hand sanitizer will be available in every classroom and used frequently. Lunch procedures look really different this year because at least for now, we're not using the cafeteria. Students are going to eat lunch in their classrooms with their teachers. Teachers are using lunchtime as an academic time um, but an academic time where teachers are reading a story to a student, or maybe they're showing a video of a story reading, story being read to students while they go around and, and help them open their things. But if you can help send things in your child's lunch that are as independent as possible, that would be super. Hot lunch is still available to students. There's two choices this year. One's a hot choice and one is a cold choice, and students still have access to milk if they'd like to just buy the milk. So if a student is going to have hot lunch, if it's A, the hot option, or B, the cold option, they will be guided down to the cafeteria with support staff, get their lunch, and then head back to the classrooms. Recess will look different too, because you guys, we wear masks at recess. But the good news is wearing masks at recess allows us to have a recess with our whole grade level. We're gonna sanitize before recess and we're gonna sanitize a hand wash after recess. And then we're going to be careful to keep our hands to ourselves during recess and use some social distancing as much as we can as children, right? 
Um, and then we have our own, we're going to have playground equipment um, for each class individually to use to also help with safety. Um, so students will have recess at two times a day. And whether it's AM recess and lunch recess or lunch recess and PM recess, they'll have it with just their grade level. And that's also an effort to help limit exposure and keep students safe. Students will be wearing face masks all day at school, including when they enter and exit the building and during recess time. So especially in the beginning, we're going to need some mask breaks. So we will have mask breaks as needed and teachers will bring their class outside. They'll make sure they're at least six feet apart um, and then they'll be able to um, maybe do a learning activity or something with their masks off. They'll also be eating lunch and snack with their masks off in the classroom. So the gator type masks are acceptable, but we did notice that as children play outside at recess, those masks sometimes have a tendency to fall down. So it'd be a good idea to practice with your child, have them mask up or gator up and um, do some playing and running around outside to see if the mask stays up for them. As we observe students, it looks like the most comfortable masks are similar to this one where it's a, a cloth mask that goes around your ears. But it's a good idea, again, to have your child practice wearing their mask to help build, build stamina and to make sure that it's a good, comfortable fit. And any type of clear shields are not acceptable. Students must wear a face mask, not a face shield. So you're going to notice another change, and that's with iPads. Students will be so we'll be using iPads differently in all grade levels, young fives through fifth grade. Within the first few weeks of school, iPads will be sent home. Parents are gonna have the option to purchase an iPad protection plan in case of breakage or loss. And information about that iPad protection plan will be sent home within the first few weeks of the school year. This change is designed to help us be prepared in case we have to shift to remote learning. And we know that can happen on a dime. Whether that's as a state we have to shift to remote learning or an individual student has to go into isolation or quarantine or a group of students. Lower elementary students in young, five, young fives through second grade will use a platform called Seesaw to access learning activities and upper elementary grades three through five will use a platform called Google Classroom to access learning activities. And we're going to be checking with you to see if you have an iPad charger or an iPhone charger at home um, just to make sure that in case of having to go remote, students would be able to charge their device at home. Let's talk through some dismissal procedures because that's changed also. And the overall change is really to avoid congestion in the hallways. And if you have ever been at Quincy at arrival or dismissal, you know that there's lots of congestion in our, our hallways and especially in the rotunda. So we're going to dismiss grade levels from separate doors this year as they head to the bus. So some classrooms are gonna go all the way around the school outside as they head to their bus lines. Students will either get directly on the bus or wait in a socially distanced line that is supervised by Quincy staff. Students must, must continue to wear masks as they wait in line and then of course on the bus and they'll be able to use that hand sanitizer as they enter the bus. Z kids this year are going to leave the building with bus students at 335 and they're going to head to a Z kids line that's near the back of the cafeteria. We have a door there that they will be supervised from there with Z kids staff and then they'll enter through that cafeteria door. I think that will work really nicely. Parent pickup is going to be different this year because parents aren't allowed in the building. So um, students who are, being, who are being picked up will go out the front doors and wait outside. You see that young fives and kin well, young fives and kindergarten only pickups will happen at the North Kindergarten doorways at 320. Young fives and kindergarten students with older siblings, along with first grade students, will wait on the lawn in front of the gym for parents for parents to park and walk up and get them. So we don't send those students through the parking lot or through the parent pickup line. Second through fifth grade students will wait near the benches you see pictured here. Um, the sprinklers won't be on at that time, I promise. And they'll wait for parents to pull up in the pickup line along the front curb. <laughs> um, parent pickup for young fives in kindergarten only will happen at the North Kindergarten Doors at 320. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about dismissal. If you are going to 
come and pick up your child at the end of the day, either because your school is of choice and have to pick up your child, or if you just choose to pick up your child, we just want you to know that our parking lot is extremely busy. We have future plans to reconfigure and enlarge our parking lot, but it's not happening right now. So it is busy, just be aware. Parents who choose to pick up will need to practice great patience and parking lot etiquette. Should I repeat that? Those of you who have been Quincy families for a while know I probably should repeat that. Parents who choose to pick up, you have to like get yourself in a Zen zone, practice great patience, generosity and spirit, and parking lot etiquette. So here's some things. Safe, student safety is our number one concern in the parking lot, of course. Parents who will exit their vehicle must park in a designated spot. You cannot pull up to the pickup lane along the curb if you're going to be exiting your car. You have to park in a designated spot. Parents may not park in any spot in the parking lot that is not a designated parking spot. That's a tricky one too because our parking lot gets very busy. So you'll want to park in wonky places that then impedes the flow of the parking lot. So we have the pickup line that goes along the curb in the front of the school, or you park in a designated spot that's outlined in yellow. One of those two things. Um, please follow the pickup line along the curb rather than cut. And that does mean that you'll have to circle the parking lot probably until you have a place in the pickup line. Thank you so much for doing this. It means the world as we try to keep our students safe and everyone as happy as possible. So one big question that is on parents' mind is, what happens if my child is sick? When can my child come back to school? And this flow chart is from the Ottawa County, the Return to School Toolkit. And it's from the health department. And just to be completely honest with you, this flow chart changed from earlier this week to today. And whenever someone asks me a question of, when can my child come back to school? I have to refer back to this flowchart. So let's take a look. So they define COVID-19 symptoms that are new or not typical for the student or staff member. So if they have any one of these symptoms or any two of these symptoms, we follow this flowchart. So if they have just one of these symptoms, we follow school policy. So for instance, if a child only has a fever and no other of these symptoms, then they would follow the school policy of being 24 hours fever free before coming back to school. But if your child has a fever of 100.4 or more and a sore throat, then we follow this protocol. Or if your child has that fever and diarrhea, then we follow this protocol. Of course, I had to pick the grossest symptom, right? Okay, so if they have any one of these symptoms or any two of these symptoms, we follow this flow chart. They are excluded from school and they would go to their your primary care provider, your health care provider, or a COVID-19 testing location for possible testing. So then one of four things happens here. So either their test results are positive, then we follow this plan, which is their home isolation until they're at least 10 days since the symptoms first appeared and at least 24 hours with no fever without fever reducing medication and the symptoms have improved. So they're home for at least 10 days, possibly more because you have to meet all of these three things. So if that's if they test positive for COVID-19. If they test negative for COVID-19, then we ask these questions. Did they have close contact of a confirmed COVID-19 case? Or did they travel internationally or cruise ship travel within the last 14 days? If the answer is no, then we follow this. They may return based on the school's illness policy guidelines. If fever, diarrhea, vomiting, 24 hours without medication, it's, res it's resolved. The sore throat, cough, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, there's improvement of the symptoms. So if they test negative, they've not been in close contact or traveled internationally or taken a cruise, then they get to come back to school following these guidelines. Okay, so if they test negative and they've been in close contact with a confirmed case or traveled internationally or taken a cruise, if that's this yes, then they finish their quarantine and then follow this policy. And the, the quarantine is 14 days. So if you've been in contact, close contact with someone who's had COVID-19, we have to quarantine for 14 days, which is why we're working really hard to avoid that close contact. That's where 
wearing masks comes in handy and keeping that social distancing at least six feet apart. So the other option is they could get an alternate diagnosis from the, um, their healthcare physician. So the alternate diagnosis could be a cold or it could be strep throat or it could be like the common flu. If they get that alternate diagnosis, then we ask these questions. Have they been in close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19? Have they traveled internationally? And then again, no, go here. Yes, finish the quarantine and then go here. And then the other alternative is not tested. We're gonna ask those same questions. Have they been in contact with someone who's a confirmed COVID-19 case, has traveled internationally or gone on a cruise in the last 14 days? And then, okay, if yes, they're not tested and yes, they've been in con close contact with a confirmed COVID-19 case, you have to finish that 14 day quarantine or self isolate for at home for 10 days since the, since the symptoms first appeared, whichever is longer. Does that make sense? Probably not, but we're gonna get used to this, right? So we're, we're gonna be home for a long time if we don't get tested and we've been in close contact with someone who's had COVID-19. If we don't get tested and we have not been in close contact with someone who's had COVID-19, or we've not traveled internationally or gone on the cruise, we go to the snow and then we self-isolate at home for 10 days since symptoms first appeared or until recovered, whichever is longer. So that's not tested, not been in close contact. We have to self-isolate for 10 days or um, until recovered, whichever is longer. So at least 10 days if we don't get tested. That's if we have an onset of these symptoms that are new or not typical for a student or staff member. That's a lot of information and this is available to you so you can look through this flowchart at your own pace and then let's keep asking questions as um, we have students who have onset of these symptoms. Again, that new and not typical is really important because um, I might have allergies. So having a, a tickle in my throat is kind of a common thing for me because I have so much drainage. That might be a common thing for your child. A headache, I get migraines. So that's a typical thing for me, but I know what my, my migraines feel like as opposed to um, getting sick kind of headache. So you know that about your child too. I hope this is helpful to you. So remember our overall goal is let's stay together, Quincy. We're going to mask up, no problem, we got this. Feels a little weird at first, but we're gonna get used to it. Our, raise your hand if you're one of those um, families, one of those parents who end up wearing your mask in the car by yourself because you just forget that it's on. Like it happens, we get used to it. We're going to mask up and we're going to stay two arms apart and we're going to stay together and as safe as possible all fall long. We love you so much. And although we can't hug you, that's another thing to maybe practice with your child, air hugs. We'll give you lots of air squeezes and um, our voices will be filled with joy and our eyes will be filled with joy when you, we see you on Tuesday, September 1st. Arr, mateys, <laughs> are you ready to set sail? Mask or no mask, we are going to have a great time this year and you knew you wouldn't get away without a costume change, right? <laughs> I cannot wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.